Hi, welcome. It is Saturday, uh, March 4th, 2017, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time down here where I live in sunny Florida. I uh, hope you'll forgive me. My voice is a little scratchy. My head is a little congested. They've been chem bombing and chemtrail spraying the heck out of us the last few days. Uh, doing a little geoengineering weather modification. Um, starting to learn a lot about that and if you're not I would suggest that you get on it check out geoengineering and weather modification I have a few videos in here if you want to check them out so we're looking at the last seven days worth of earthquakes these are uh, all magnitudes as reported by the USGS um, just a note the USGS does not always report everything uh, they do for some reason seem to be censoring certain data, scientific data, I don't know why. Um, people that are researching like myself know this full well and so that's why we rely on lots of other uh, avenues for the data as well. But as reported by the USGS, you can see we in the US over here we clearly have a, a swarm breaking down over here. Yellowstone is lit up like a Christmas tree up in the northwest area. Uh, over here in the Cascadia subduction zone area, we have a slow slip event that's into its second week right now. They generally last about three, four, five weeks. Um, whenever that starts to slow down and the seismic pressure quiets, uh, that is when we should be on the lookout for a large seismic event in this general area up in here. Um, up here to the north in Alaska, we also have a swarm. I can get to it. I'm going to switch this to satellite. I think it's easier to point things out. My computer seems to be running a little slow, and I apologize for that. I'm going to try to keep this video short, about 10-15 minutes. Switch to satellite view just so you can see things a little easier. And uh, I'm going to zoom out. So we can look at everything around the globe. I hope you watched my forecast from last week, last Saturday. I did an update and forecast and a warning. We saw large deep earthquakes in this area. We expected that seismic pressure to produce large shallow earthquakes and that that seismic pressure would also transfer along the plate boundaries, which are these red lines, on a fixed trajectory and result in large shallow earthquakes at certain points that we mentioned including New Zealand, uh, including the Solomon Islands, including Papua New Guinea, including Indonesia, including Guam and Taiwan, including Japan, including Russia, including Alaska, all of the areas mentioned that seismic pressure transferred to up in here into Burma, Myanmar, in Nepal up in that area and that the seismic pressure would work its way across through Iran and Turkey and Greece and uh, we also expect to see some activity over here in Romania but again the USGS isn't reporting everything that happened this is just what the USGS was reporting so if you watch my video last week we talked about that seismic pressure from the large deep earthquake we were looking for certain magnitudes um, mostly all those magnitudes hit right on with fours, fives, and, and, and sixes in different areas, twos and threes in certain areas. What I did not see is a seven to eight, which is what I was looking for and expecting. It's been seven days. I contemplated this morning on doing a video and just calling it a miss. But uh, there, a little earthquake happened over here in the Caribbean area just now. Um, by the way, the yellow dots are over the last seven days. The gold dots are over the last 24 hours and the red dots are as they happen and within the last hour. Um, so anyway, right before I got ready to do the video, I thought I would check some of the other reporting agencies. So I went over here to the uh, EMSC, which is basically the European version of uh, the USGS, which by the way, they don't also always list the earthquakes, all of them. However, you can get a lot more data from them, and uh, right before I was getting ready to do this video, I thought I would just check over here to see what they're showing. Um, I checked the last 24 hours worth of earthquakes, and 
I'm looking for the large ones and I found this that I had not seen on the USGS when I went to bed last night. A 6.0 in the Solomon Islands right here. It was about 12, 13 hours ago and uh, it was not listed on the USGS so I went over here to the scientific data and it will give you a list of all of the different reporting site um, sites where the seismographs are coming in and the first thing I noticed these were all up in initially all up in the higher 6.5 6.7 range closer to what I was looking for which was a 7 to 8 magnitude to hit in the West Pacific. So I still have a few more days for a 6 or higher, 6, 7, 8 up here in South America that I had expected. But this one over here should have already hit and I hadn't noticed anything. But now that I see that there was one that at least some sites are reporting as a 6.7, I kind of feel a little more comfortable with, with just ending the uh, warning for that seven to eight in this give it a few more days and we'll see it could still be a seven to eight magnitude in this region right here and again we're still we have a few more days looking for six seven eights over here on the coast of south america um it's not really much to report right now there haven't really been a whole lot of large deep earthquakes so i can't really make a forecast just yet I do plan to do another video, a follow-up video later on today. I just wanted to go ahead and cover these uh, last week's worth of earthquakes and just show to you, if you have watched that video where I have mentioned New Zealand and all of these different areas, and as you can see here over the last seven days, every one of them was hit. Again, we have a silent zone over here as we have also a, a slow slip event taking place. So. This right here is something we're definitely going to have to keep our eyes on over the next couple of weeks. But uh, we could see some large activity up in this area. We've got swarms building here and here. That could be an indication that pressure is, is slowly building up in this area right here. So if we have swarms of fours and fives up here and threes and fours down here, twos and threes and fours down here, then we're looking at fives and sixes over here at some point or even higher few years back there was a 7.7 .7 earthquake that happened right at the end of a slow slip event that took place and so we look for the same pattern to happen all of this right here is history and it shows you the progression of seismic pressure and it shows you that that pressure transfers along fixed trajectories and that it produces similar or larger size earthquakes in those areas so I'll come back later on this afternoon, hopefully, if we see any large deep earthquakes especially, I'll come back and I'll do a separate video later. So I hope that you will uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. Again, this is just an update. It's not a forecast just yet. We're still looking for a possible 7 to 8 magnitude over here, 6 to 7 or possibly an 8 over here. And later, a few weeks from now, we're still looking in this area right here. The uh, past seven days where the earthquakes in Japan have been pretty significant, as you can see. And that Fukushima nuclear plant disaster that they got going over there. Uh, you know, these earthquakes certainly don't help if the ground is still moving in any significant manner around that disaster site. Uh, Italy was still looking for some fours and fives to come over to you sometime over the next 24 to 36 hours. So I'm going to wrap this video up. Again, if I see any large deep earthquakes later... I'm going to do another video.